What's going on guys, I'm your host Jared Bronstein and we probably have the most IO story ever here for you today. Make sure you guys are subscribed, click that bell so you can be notified when we post more videos and follow the IO team on Instagram, we got links down below. So now we need to tell you guys all about this story which is still developing and has me extremely confused as well. Long story short, Christine Barnett and her now ex-husband Michael Barnett were arrested and released on bail after being charged with leaving their newly adopted child in Lafayette, Indiana in 2013 when they moved to Canada with their family and broke off contact. The story has two sides however, so we'll go from the beginning. The end kind of leaves us gasping for more because the investigation is still ongoing, or I guess I should say the trial at this point, but here goes. In 2010, Christine and Michael Barnett agreed to an emergency adoption of Natalia Grace, who was believed to be six years old at the time. Or so they thought. As far as they were concerned, when they went to the adoption center located in Florida, Natalia had been in the US for two years, had a Ukrainian birth certificate that read September 4th, 2003, and needed to find a new home immediately after her previous adoptive parents suddenly gave her up for an undisclosed reason. Christine explained, I quote, out of compassion for their situation, I didn't want to press them for information on what had gone wrong. Natalia was extremely nervous. You could see she was going to need a lot of support and care. We did notice immediately in the parking lot that she she couldn't walk. There was nothing in the paperwork stating that. End quote. It turns out Natalia has a form of dwarfism, more specifically spondyloepiphyseal. Like any good parent, Michael and Christine showed their new addition to the family with love, taking her for ice cream and even going to Disney World to help her get more comfortable with her family. When they went to the beach for the first time as a family, Christine and Michael were shocked at what Natalia did. I quote, the boys rushed into the water and Natalia wanted to be carried into the ocean. Michael and myself were physically exhausted, so we asked her to wait just a few minutes. With that, she just got up and ran into the ocean. I remember looking at Mike and thinking, what's going on? She couldn't walk a second ago, and now she just got up and ran." End quote. Things went from weird to, well, just absurd, when Christine gave the apparent six-year-old a bath. According to Christine, I quote, I was giving her a bath, and I noticed that she had full pubic hair. I was so shocked. I had just been told she was a six-year-old, and it was very apparent she wasn't. End quote. Yeah, that's, no. As the days went on, Christine saw more and more evidence that her and her family may have been duped by an adult pretending to be a child, given her condition. According to Christine, Natalia would use sophisticated vocabulary way beyond her years, didn't like dolls or toys, and wanted to be in the company of teenage girls, not little children. She also didn't have a Ukrainian accent and couldn't understand her native tongue when a Ukrainian family friend came over and spoke to her in Ukrainian. Christine then started to find bloody clothing in her trash, Evidence that Natalia was having her period and trying to hide it because she was in fact older than initially believed. Anyone see the movie The Orphan? Anyway, following the blood incident, Christine went to her family physician who ordered a bone density test to really determine Natalia's age. The results determined the girl had to be at least 14 or older, so Christine swapped her childlike clothing for clothing more appropriate for a young teen. This is when things really started to take a turn for the worse. Apparently within a year of being adopted by the family, according to Christine, their newly adopted daughter tried to harm the family more than once. As seen on a baby monitor, when Christine left the room, Natalia attacked a baby boy. In 2011, she was smearing bodily fluids on the walls and making death threats to the family. Christine even claimed she had trouble sleeping because Natalia would stand over them in bed. She had to hide all sharp objects out of fear she would try to kill them by stabbing them, and once even caught Natalia trying to poison her coffee. Christine said, I quote, I saw her putting chemicals, bleach, Windex, something like that in my coffee, and I asked her, what are you doing? She said, I am trying to poison you, end quote. Following these incidents, Natalia would spend about a year being treated for various psychiatric disorders, spending between days and weeks at the St. Vincent Indianapolis Stress Center. In 2012, after Natalia allegedly tried to drag her adoptive mother onto an electric fence, she was sent to a state-run psychiatric unit under supervision long term because she was considered a threat to others. During her treatment there, it's believed she told doctors she is much older than she appears. In January of 2012, a clinical therapist claims Natalia said she was 18. The family's primary physician, Andrew McLaren, dated a letter in March 2012 claiming Natalia's 2003 birth date was inaccurate and that she made a career out of pretending to be a young child, fooling the family as well as himself. In June of the same year, she told staff at LaRue Carter Hospital in Indianapolis that she tried to kill her family members and felt no remorse, describing it as fun. That same month, the family applied to have Natalia's age corrected on her birth certificate so she could be treated as an adult and receive proper psychiatric treatment. After going through court, it was determined by Judge Gerald S. Moore that the family's allegations were true, and Natalia's official date of birth was changed from September 4th, 2003 to September 4th, 1989 
making her legally go from 8 years old to 22 years old. That same year, the police started questioning if she committed immigration fraud, but the case was sent to the FBI and ICE, which officials believed was never really looked into. Natalia was released from the psychiatric ward in August of 2012 and placed under the supervision of Aspire Indiana. Even though she was legally an adult, Christine and Michael found her an apartment and helped her get a social security number, food stamps, an ID, and apply for benefits. Natalia caused problems at her new residence and was evicted, which is when the Barnetts once again found her a new apartment, this time in Lafayette, Tippecanoe County. Christine stayed in contact with Natalia despite all the stuff she put her family through and even made a plan to enroll her in school to help her get a high school diploma. Christine explained, I quote, I said I've been taking care of you as an adult. I will do one more year of financial aid, the exact same thing I'm doing for all of my children. I co-signed the lease and paid for the rent up front for a year. I did everything you would do when you send your child off to college. I helped her with her groceries and bought furniture at Target for her. I was optimistic. She had a concrete plan for her life. She had food stamps. She had social security income for the rest of her things. She had demonstrated she was able to live." End quote. Now this was in 2013 when Christine also released a book about her son, Jacob, who suffers from autism but is considered a physics prodigy. That same year the family moved to Waterloo, Ontario, Canada, so a 13 year old Jacob could go to school at the Parameter Institute for Theoretical Physics. When the family moved, they left Natalia, who was legally 22 at the time, in her new apartment. At this point, Christine claims she lost contact with Natalia and feared she stopped taking her medication and was posing as a child for a new, unsuspecting family. Christine did, however, get a letter in the mail saying that the Natalia changed Michael from the beneficiary of her social security income to someone else. Now, here's where things get crazy. The Tippecanoe County Sheriff's Department claims the family abandoned their underage daughter, claiming that a doctor rigged at the Peyton Manning Children's Hospital carried out a bone density test on Natalia in June 2010 that revealed she was approximately 8 years old. Another test, which occurred two years later at the same facility, claimed she was around 11. I know two years from eight is 10, but maybe it was two and a half years. It was approximate, so who knows. Regardless, in 2014, Natalia actually went to the cops and claimed her parents had abandoned her and moved to Canada. In that same year, Michael left Christine, moved back to Indiana, and remarried. Why they waited five years to act on this case is still undetermined. But after they visited Michael for about three hours on September 5th, 2019, he allegedly admitted that he knew all along Natalia was indeed a minor and that Christine told Natalia to tell other people she looks young but was actually 22. However, Michael's lawyer claims this information is inaccurate, saying, I quote, The police affidavit is not true. Michael never said he knew Natalia was a child. Police knocked on Michael's door and he spoke to them for three hours without an attorney present. The statements he gave were clearly taken out of context. My client and I have absolutely no idea why the district attorney has chosen to level these accusations against my client and Christine. The affidavit has been very selective in the medical reports it has chosen to cite." End quote. As of now, the whereabouts of Natalia are currently unknown. It's presumed she's about 30 years old, and the last time she was seen was by Michael in 2016 at a Tippecanoe Circuit Court when another couple tried to legally become Natalia's guardians. After it was objected by the Barretts, who claimed she was really an adult, the couple dropped their guardianship petition. Now here's where things get even crazier as if this story wasn't wacky enough. In court, when it was proven that Natalia was actually 22, the lead investigator who's charging Michael and Christine with crimes against a child was there when the decision was made. So why he's trying to move forward with his allegations is beyond anyone. The state of Indiana is trying to charge this couple with crimes against a child, even though the state's same courts have determined that Natalia is most definitely not a child. Christine surrendered to authorities on September 19th and was released after posting a $5,500 bond. Michael did the same thing the day before, posting a $5,000 bond to be released. He was in court on September 24th to state his case, but as of now, the investigation, or I guess trial, is ongoing. As I always promised and promised in the initial video, should any updates or more information come to light, We'll be the first to let you know. Well, guess what? We got an update. Let's get into it. Natalia, the allegedly abandoned minor who got her birth year legally changed from 2003 to 1989 after her adoptive parents went to court, is now living with another family. And it's actually the family that tried to adopt her back in 2016, which was the last time Michael saw Natalia in person, which was in the courtroom. The Barnetts objected the man's request to adopt, claiming she was a legal adult. After a trial and witnesses seemed to prove Natalia was 22 at the time, the judge upheld the ruling that she was an adult and the couple dropped their guardianship petition. But now it seems they got their wish. Kinda. Natalia was adopted by Antoine and Cynthia Manns and joins her new parents and five siblings currently living in Indiana. But it seems that she wasn't legally adopted by the family, at least according to the state of Indiana. Instead, the family has just been housing her and taking care of her while they tried to legally change her birth year back to 2003. Because she's an adult, 
she can't legally be adopted. A family friend of the man's spoke incredibly highly of them saying, they just so happened to come across this person that was not being treated right and cared enough to put in the effort to make sure something was done about it. If it's true that her parents had abandoned her, it's horrible. Now of course the Barnetts claim that Natalia is really 30 years old, or so at this point. But this family friend strongly disagrees. She went on to say, I'm not a doctor or psychiatrist, but I've spoken with Natalia and I believe her. If you're asking me if I think she is 30, that's ridiculous. And as always, we will update you guys with any other information that comes out of this bizarre case. Not really sure what the story is here, as it seems as each day goes by, we're getting more information as the days go on kind of thing. So, you know, we'll keep updating you guys. Either way, it's definitely interesting. And make sure you guys have those post notifications on so you guys can be the first to know the most accurate, up to date information that there possibly is. Is she 30? Is she 22? Is she 6? Is she 18? I have no idea, to be honest with you guys. I get it. It's crazy with a ton of twists and turns. I personally feel really bad for the Barnetts, who've pretty much gone out of their way to make sure Natalia had a good life. Prosecutors charged Natalia Barnett's adoptive parents, Michael Barnett, and his ex wife, Christine Barnett, on September 11th. They are accused of abandoning their adoptive daughter, Natalia, in 2013 and moving to Canada with their three sons. Both Michael and Christine turned themselves in and posted bail. And as of Monday, Michael Barnett has filed a motion to dismiss the case because it was filed after the five year statute of limitations expired. The defense argued that the statute of limitations doesn't apply in this case because the Barnetts concealed evidence by changing Natalia's age. And yet it wasn't the Barnetts who changed Natalia's age. It was done so legally by a Marion County probate judge who changed her birth records. This change was never hidden from prosecutors. It wasn't concealed. In fact, prosecutors were well aware of this the entire time. According to her Ukrainian birth records, Natalia would have been 10 years old in September of 2013. At the time of her adoption, the Barnetts believed that they were adopting an 8 year old girl. But when they took Natalia home, they noticed she had attributes that could only be explained if she wasn't a child. She had pubic hair, she had periods, she had mental health disorders that only develop in a person's teens and 20s. Natalia also began to display aggressive, violent behavior toward her adoptive family. She was clinically diagnosed as both a psychopath and a sociopath. And I'm actually astonished that the Barnetts helped her as much as they did and I'm also astonished that the prosecutors in this case are trying to accuse the Barnetts of being anything other than good parents toward a potential sociopath who threatened them and essentially committed fraud by making them think she was younger than she actually was. Natalia had a form of dwarfism. She was masquerading as a child when she was actually an adult, or so the Barnetts say. The Barnetts maintain that Natalia was an adult when they adopted her, which would essentially make the adoption null and void. You can't adopt an adult. Michael Barnett's lawyer said, I quote, as we have alleged before, this person was not a minor at no time during the trial when she was in care or custody of my client. This was in fact some sort of ruse perpetuated on my client. We do believe at the end of the due process, both Mr. Barnett and Christine Barnett will be vindicated of these charges. Back in June of 2012, the Barnetts legally changed Natalia's birth record to indicate that she was born in 1989, not 2003. 13 months later, the Barnetts got Natalia an apartment. In August of 2013, the Barnetts then moved to Canada so their eldest son could study physics at the Perimeter Institute for Theoretical Physics in Ontario. They only moved to Canada after they legally changed her age to 22 years old at the time. Christine Barnett told news outlets that she and her ex-husband did everything to make sure Natalia was set for life. They paid her rent for a year, they set her up on social security disability income and food stamps, and all of this was done before they moved. But in September of 2014, Natalia contacted sheriff's deputies to tell them that the Barnetts abandoned her. As of now, Natalia birth records haven't changed. Natalia legally turned 30 in September. But Lafayette attorney Michael Tromel tried to change her records back to the original date during a 2016 guardianship civil suit. He argued this week that during the petition to change Natalia's birth records, Natalia wasn't represented by legal counsel that could have presented her side of the issue to the court. But Michael Barnett showed up to that civil suit to protest Natalia's age change, and the judge refused to change her age as a result. That same couple who wanted to become Natalia's guardians are the same family she's now living with in Indiana. At this time, Natalia hasn't come forward with her version of the story. She now lives with the Indiana couple, the Mants, who believe her. They do think that she's as old as she says she is, even though she's legally not. They also can't legally adopt her 
her because Natalia is not legally an adult. Christine Barnett said in a Facebook post on Sunday that she was shocked about the allegations against her. She said, I quote, I am sick and devastated from the idea of any of these charges and maintain that they are false charges. We will keep you updated as the story unfolds, but something tells me it's gonna get even weirder. The couple's trial date is set for January 28th, 2020. As a condition, the Barnetts can't leave Indiana and they can't consume alcohol or drugs. Damn, that's gonna suck. I need a glass of wine just talking about this stuff. So, the burning question How old is Natalia? The short answer is no one really knows. But let's start at the beginning. Her birth certificate from the Ukraine that was given to the Barnetts when they adopted her stated that she was born 9 4 3, which is pretty weird. I'm not gonna lie. Who's ever heard of a birth date that only has three digits? Usually it would say something like 09 04 03, which would make her birth date September 4th, 2003. But I've never heard of a birth certificate stating only three numbers like that, which might mean it was fake or it was incomplete. The Barnetts had her birth certificate corrected back in 2012 to show that she was born in 1989. Changing your legal birth date is not something that is done lightly. Remember that guy that wanted to legally change his age so he could match with the younger women on Tinder? Yeah, that's not allowed. <laughs> Can't do that. But with the case of Natalia, things kind of change. The Barnetts had a family doctor conduct bone density tests after Natalia was adopted. Those bone density tests determined that Natalia was at least 14 years old or maybe even older. As proof, Michael Barnett provided a letter from his primary care doctor where he insisted that Natalia was quote, substantially older than she claims to be, citing her dental records and secondary sex characteristics as proof. Here is that letter, dated October 24th, 2016. This letter states that determination of her true age has been difficult. Records provided by officials in her native country, the Ukraine, are grossly incomplete. She has a type of dwarfism. She's been seen by both an orthopedist and an endocrinologist. Neither specialist was able to help substantially with age assessment. The letter goes on to describe a visit to the dentist in 2011, and that dentist said that Natalia was substantially older than she claimed to be because her detention was adult. When she was hospitalized in a psychiatric hospital in 2012, she was at least 14. This was when she was also diagnosed with sociopathic personality disorder, which doesn't appear until at least 16 years of age. Around this time, Natalia started admitting that she was over 18. Since the letter is dated 2016 and she started admitting she was over 18 in 2011, that would make her at least 29 years old today. Because of this letter, which describes the Barnetts as the biggest victims in this case, a judge had agreed to have her birth year changed to 1989. However, police and other officials have called these claims into question. There were other other bone density tests carried out on Natalia in 2010 that showed her to be 8 years old then. In 2012, bone density tests showed she was around 11. One of Natalia's lawyers who represented her in 2012 said, I quote, I do not believe her to be an adult at the time I represented her. Another lawyer who represented a family who was trying to become Natalia's legal guardians told a news outlet, the most egregious part about this is that this child was turned into adult without any representation. So if you go with the police's side, if Natalia was 8 years old in 2010 or 11 in 2012, that would make her still a legal adult over 18 years old today. Which also means that she can't be legally adopted by the Manses, another family in Indiana who believed her to be 13 or 14 years old in 2016. However, this would also mean that the Barnetts did abandon a dependent, their adopted child, when they moved to Canada. But honestly, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't have done that if they didn't have experts confirm Natalia was much older than she claimed to be, and also after they legally changed her age. If any anyone is to blame for Natalia being abandoned by the Barnetts, it's the judge who legally changed her birth year to 1989. Some new evidence is coming to light about Natalia Barnett, a sociopath and psychopath that has displayed violent tendencies toward her adoptive parents, who is believed to be an adult masquerading as a child. This evidence I'm about to tell you, to me, without a doubt, proves that Natalia is an adult and was an adult when she was abandoned by the Barnetts. So we know the Barnett family set Natalia up with an apartment when they moved to Waterloo so their prodigy son Jacob could study physics. Before they left, they legally changed her birth year to 1989 and enrolled her in a state-run home through a program called Aspire Indiana. Natalia ended up being evicted from this program. So then the Barnetts rented her an apartment in Lafayette, Indiana. Christine alleges that she 
she paid Natalia's rent for a year and set her up with Medicaid, disability aid, social security and food stamps. But then there was this three year gap where no one knew what happened to Natalia or how she was able to fend for herself while she was on her own and not under the care of a guardian. Now we know where Natalia was during this time period. She was taking adult classes and working on her GED as in her high school diploma. Why would a child try and get her high school diploma? Well, either she's a prodigy or she's not a child. We know this because Natalia enrolled at the Lafayette Adult Resource Academy. That's when she met her next door neighbor, Margaret, who describes her as a very chatty person. She said, I quote, she loved to talk. She could be shy at first, but once she got going, she had something to say about everything. This educational institution does not allow anybody to take classes. In order to go there, students must take a placement test that determines where they're at in subjects like English, math, history, and science. Students have to demonstrate they're at least at junior high level of knowledge and if they don't possess that they work with a tutor to get their grade level up. Lafayette Adult Resource Academy teacher Meg Foley told Insider, this is adult education. We cannot have anyone under the age of 16. Anyone under 18 must be enrolled by a parent and have written release from the school they came from. Margaret Axum said that she didn't think it was fair for the Barnetts to leave Natalia on her own, but she doesn't believe Natalia was a child. She said, I'm not sure how old she was, but she had to be at least 18. She didn't seem worldly enough to be 30 now. I think it must be something in between. Margaret and Natalia attended classes together and they also talked when they saw each other around the neighborhood. They would also meet up with people at a drug and alcohol recovery house in their neighborhood. So this wasn't because Natalia had a drug or alcohol problem. She was just lonely and wanted people to talk to according to Margaret. Then in 2016, Natalia vanished. No one at the school knew where she went. Margaret Axum then learned that she was evicted from her apartment and a few days before she met with the police who wanted to put her somewhere safe. Natalia popped up again in April of 2016 because she had new guardians, Antoine and Cynthia Manns. They believed she was 12 years old at the time. This was when they asked the Tippecanoe County Family Court if they could become her legal guardians. They asked a judge to change her legal birth date back to 2003. But that's when Michael Barnett came back into the picture and went to the Marion County Court hearing with his attorney. He provided a letter from his doctor maintaining that Natalia was an adult. It was this letter that forced the judge to reject the man's plea to change her birth year back to 2003, and her birth certificate continued to state that she was born in 1989. The case was dismissed. Okay, so as if things aren't interesting enough, listen to this. I have tea, I have more tea, tea. So remember in a previous video, I talked about how it was weird that Natalia's Ukrainian birth certificate was like odd because her birth date was 9-4-3 indicating September 4th, 2003, but there were only three digits. Usually a birth certificate has six digits. September 4th, 2003 would be 09-04-03, right? So apparently the Ukraine has a history of falsifying birth certificates and that's according to other adoptive parents who've had similar experiences adopting children from the Ukraine. One of those adoptive parents is Kim Thompson, another Indiana parent who also adopted a child from the Ukraine. She said, I will say that Ukraine is above all else corrupt and birth certificates were completely fabricated. Her adoptive son once told Told her how kids figured out their ages in the orphanages. Okay, listen to this, okay, listen. Kids would base their age compared to the height of other kids. If one kid was certain he was 10, a taller kid would be 11 and a shorter kid would be nine. Are you kidding me right now? And that's why Natalia was given the birth certificate that she was because she was shorter than everyone else. I can't, I can't right now, I can't. Oh, but wait, there's more, okay. There's a reason why Natalia has displayed violent behavior toward the Barnetts, and this is where it gets kind of sad. It's likely that Natalia had experienced a great deal of trauma in her life. Indiana behavior scientist John Swinehart said, I quote, it's somewhat common for children with severe trauma to do things such as smear bodily fluids, become aggressive towards animals or people, or act in an angry or oppositional manner. The world is unpredictable to adoptive children, so they must act in unpredictable ways to deal with it. This is all pretty unfortunate, and clearly Natalia has had a very hard life which has sparked the person she is today. But was it the responsibility of the Barnetts to deal with her violent behavior and continue caring for her? Well, it depends what the courts say. Christine and Michael Barnett are being charged with two counts of neglect of a child or dependent. The problem with this case is in the state of Indiana, 
A neglect statute defines a dependent as a person of any age who has a mental or physical disability. Because of Natalia's mental and physical health, it might not make a difference if she was or wasn't a child when the Barnetts left her in Indiana and moved to Canada. They abandoned someone who was legally their dependent. The Barnetts faced trial in January of 2020 and if they're convicted they could face up to 5 years in prison each and fines of $10,000. Well this is a pickle. A woman who claims to be Natalia Barnett's biological birth mother has come forward to say that she is a child. Well this is an interesting turn of events isn't it? Welcome back to Inform Overload, I'm Charlotte Dobre and I'm coming at you with an update to one of the biggest news stories of the year. So. A Ukrainian woman claiming to be Natalia's birth mother says that her daughter is definitely a child. Natalia's birth mother was found by three Daily Mail reporters, Will Stewart, Svetlana Skarbo and Ben Ashford. The woman's name is Anna Volodymyrovina Gava and she told Daily Mail TV that she was forced to give up Natalia 16 years ago when Natalia was only an infant. At the time Anna had divorced Natalia's father and she couldn't raise her on her own. Natalia's father has since passed away. She said I quote, daughter forgive me for what happened 16 years ago years ago. Visit soon for me to see you. We are waiting for you. You have two sisters and two brothers. Natalia's older sister, Yulia, is 20 and she's actually pregnant so Natalia would actually be an aunt in a few months. Daily Mail also managed to track down the documents from the orphanage that took Natalia in after her mother, Anna, gave her up. She was admitted in October of 2003. The document that was provided would support the fact that Natalia is a child, 16 years old today. Born on September 4th, 2003, 6.25 in the morning, if she was given up by her mother 16 years ago. Natalia stated the orphanage for five years until she was adopted by an American couple in 2008. During a very emotional interview, Anna also said to the Daily Mail TV, I quote, They told me there are good people in America. They will pay for everything. The child will be normal. I was told that they would do a surgery which I wouldn't be able to afford. They said the surgery was $80,000. Six months into her pregnancy, Anna learned that Natalia had a complex pathology. Her last memory of her daughter was a baby with quote, short little legs, short little arms, and she had no neck. Her doctors also told her she should give Natalia up and that she would need to be chained to a chair or bed. Damn, who are these doctors, yo? The couple who initially adopted Natalia gave her up in 2010, at which point she was adopted by Christine and Michael Barnett. Three years later, the Barnetts moved to Canada so their prodigy son could study physics. They only moved after they legally had a judge change Natalia's birth year from 2003 to 1989, and they say that they paid her rent for a year and set her up with an apartment. They hardly abandoned her. Natalia spent time on her own, and according to reports, she studied at an adult institution so she could get her GED. She is now living with another family in Indiana who believes she's a teenager. I'm a big enough person to admit when I was wrong, but in order to confirm that this woman is Natalia's birth mother, there would have to be DNA tests done, but I, like many of you, were pretty convinced that Natalia was an adult, and that convincing wasn't done lightly. There were medical experts who did bone density tests, a dentist who examined Natalia's teeth, and they vouched for the Barnett's claims, the claims that she was an adult. There were psychiatrists who believed that she was older than she said she was. There were claims made by people who knew Natalia to be an adult. Natalia also admitted herself that she was an adult. She had periods, she had pubic hair, and she had an advanced vocabulary. She had adult medical conditions. She was diagnosed as both a sociopath and a psychopath, and the Barnett's claim she also tried to poison them by putting bleach in their coffee, and that she attacked their other children. But on behalf of IO, we apologize to Natalia. This is obviously a very confusing case, and we were relaying claims made by experts. We didn't tell you anything that wasn't true. These were just claims, and they're not facts. That being said, it's important for me to make sure you guys have the full story on this. I definitely learned a lesson, a lesson I continue to learn every single day and that lesson is don't form an opinion until you have all the facts. In defense of the Barnetts though, I highly doubt that they would have abandoned Natalia if they weren't absolutely certain that she was an adult. So the people that are saying that they're monsters or whatever, they're just not. Their main argument is Natalia is an adult sociopath who's masquerading as a child. They had a judge legally change her birth year and the courts also overturned a request to change Natalia's birth year back to the original date. For now, Natalia's mother Anna wants Natalia to return to the Ukrainian city of Mykolaiv when she turns 18 years old so they can be reunited. I'm really anxious to see how this story unfolds. From the photos of Natalia's mother, they do resemble each other. They both have similar brown eyes. What do you think friends? Are you convinced Natalia is a child or do you need to see some more evidence? I don't know man, I'm looking at the photos of Natalia's mother and they do look alike, like they really do. It's been a couple days since we updated you guys on Natalia Barnett. What's that? It's time for an update. So before I go any further, I realize that there are a lot of you who are emotionally invested in this case, and I would urge you to wait 
until the trial is over before you make any assumptions. I've actually been in contact with someone in Natalia's life right now and they've definitely given me a lot to think about. I can't share our conversation here because I want to respect their privacy, but you guys should definitely keep in mind that you're only hearing one side of the story, the Barnett's side of the story, which has been highly publicized. There's only one main narrative that paints Natalia to be a horrible person. Do not make assumptions about people until the courts make a decision. Innocent until proven guilty, always. So during a confidential hearing that took place this week, Michael Barnett's defense attorney, Terrence Kinnard, has asked the judge, Stephen P. Meyer, to redact his address from court proceedings and also be removed from other court filings because Michael Barnett has been receiving credible threats of violence, including an incident where someone broke into his home. His address has been public for more than a month now. His lawyer said, I quote, approximately two weeks prior to today, Mr. Michael Barnett had an intruder intrude upon his house where he needed assistance from law enforcement to protect his house at the time. Michael Barnett was not at home at the time and was out of state, but his 19 year old stepdaughter and elderly father-in-law were at home. They say that a man came to the door asking to charge his dead cell phone. This same man was seen wandering Michael Barnett's property earlier in the day. Police arrested him and found out that he was a journalist from Spain that wanted to get an interview with the Barnett's. The reporter was told not to come back to the property or he would be trespassing, but he came back later that afternoon. Or so they say. So the journalist has believed to be identified as Alejandro Rodriguez. He told the journal and courier, I quote, I tried to reach all versions in this story as most journalists must do. He said he was never inside the residence and he did not use deception. He did go to the house twice during his stay in Indiana because he wanted a statement from Barnett. But he says the stops at his house were days apart and not on the same day as Michael Barnett says. So this wasn't the only threat in recent days. Michael's lawyer also says that there was another incident back in September following Christine first court hearing, where a credible online death threat was made. Apparently it was some sort of social media post. Even though the Tippecanoe County Sheriff's Lieutenant Brian Lowe said the threat wasn't credible, they gave Christine Barnett a police escort to her initial hearing on September 27th. So during the recent hearing that took place this past Tuesday, the mental health records of Natalia Barnett were released to the prosecutors. Unfortunately for the public and anyone who wants to know the true nature of Natalia Barnett's mental health, those records will be redacted and not made public. After a decision by the judge, Christine Barnett is now permitted to return home to her new home in Florida after she was instructed to stay within the state of Indiana for the duration of the trial. She is permitted to return home under the conditions that she turns over her passport and sign an extradition waiver. The judge hasn't granted Michael Barnett's request yet and if that's going to happen, it will be done during another hearing on October 23rd. This upcoming court hearing is crucial as the court will also consider the motion to dismiss the entire case against Michael Barnett and have the two charges of neglect dropped. We we will keep you updated on the story when we have more information. Over the progression of the Natalia Barnett story, I've come to realize there's a lot of conflicting info floating around about Natalia Grace Barnett. But there's a difference between a fact and a claim, and sometimes the definition gets convoluted. So I decided to put together all the facts we know for sure about Natalia Barnett into one nifty top 10 list for you. And yes, some of these facts you probably haven't heard before. You're about to hear the top 10 shocking facts about Natalia Barnett you won't believe. In at number 10, Natalia is said to be from the Ukraine. Yet Natalia does not have a Ukrainian accent and never spoke a word of Ukrainian while she was in the care of the Barnetts. She's said to have arrived in the United States in the year 2008 as part of an adoption program. This we know to be true thanks to a probable cause affidavit. Natalia spent some time with one adoptive family but was returned to the adoption center for undisclosed reasons. At this time no one knows what those undisclosed reasons are. Then Michael and Christine Barnett adopted Natalia in 2010. At number 9, Natalia's birth records indicate that she was born on September 4th, 2008. The certificate states 9-4-3. Natalia was examined by a physician in 2010 and they estimated her age was 8 years old at the time, which would make her 18 years old today. Two years later in 2012, a children's hospital did their own testing and estimated Natalia was around 11 years old, making her 19 years old today. Confused yet? In at 8, Natalia has a rare form of dwarfism. The medical name for it is spondylopiphyseal dysplasia congenia. There have only been around 175 reported cases of this particular type of dwarfism ever. It's an inherited bone growth disorder present from birth that causes short stature, skeletal abnormalities, as well as problems with both vision and hearing. This is what's caused a lot of issues with determining Natalia's age. At number 7, Natalia's legal age is 30, 
Back in June of 2012, Michael and Christine Barnett legally had Natalia's age change from 8 years old to 22 years old. This wasn't something that could be done lightly. You can't just go to City Hall, sign some papers and change your age. In order to do this, the Barnetts provided birth records to a judge indicating Natalia was born in 1989, which would mean she was 22 at the time and 30 years old today. I'm not sure where they got birth records that stated Natalia was 22 at the time. I noticed some comments on one of our videos that state birth records from Europe start with the birth year and then end with the day. So maybe that's where the confusion came in. I'm not sure. At number six on our list, Natalia has mental health issues. According to Michael Barnett, one of the reasons why they wanted to change her age was so she could be lawfully admitted into a psychiatric hospital to get the care she needed. According to claims made by Christine Barnett, she was fearful for her life. Christine claims that Natalia threatened to kill her and her family on more than one occasion. While on Dr. Oz's show, Michael Barnett said that they caught Natalia pouring pine salt into Christine's coffee. When they confronted her about it, Natalia simply said, I'm trying to kill you. After this, the Barnetts took Natalia to psychiatric professionals. Michael said, I quote, while at the stress center, she was documenting, she was telling doctors, she was telling therapists, she was writing down in her notepad, not only am I trying to kill Christine, I'm trying to kill the brothers too. Natalia had three adoptive brothers. According to Barnett's, she also said, I quote, here's how I'm going to do it. Here's what I'm going to do with their bodies. At number five, the Barnett's left Natalia in Indiana and moved to Waterloo in 2013 so their eldest son at the time, 12 year old Jacob Barnett could study physics at the Perimeter Institute for Theoretical Physics. When Natalia was released from the stress center where caretakers supported the claim that Natalia was an adult, the Barnett's set her up with an apartment. They claimed they paid her rent for the first three months, set her up with disability, social security, and food stamps. Michael Barnett also claims that he checked on her a couple times a week and she was fine. Sliding into number four, Natalia was taking adult classes at the Lafayette Adult Resource Academy, an institution where adults can get their GED. The Lafayette Adult Resource Academy does not allow just anyone to take classes. Students have to be adults. But according to a neighbor, Natalia quit going to classes one day and was evicted from her Lafayette apartment right around the same time. In at three, you might not know this, but Natalia Barnett has a YouTube channel. She has 102 subscribers at the time of this recording and she joined the platform on December 14th, 2014. She hasn't posted any content, but she's got some playlists. At that time, the Barnetts had officially moved to Canada. Her last name on the channel is still listed as Barnett. At number two, Natalia has never been charged with any crime, which is kind of interesting. Despite all of the claims made by the Barnetts that she was violent toward them and their children, she was never arrested for attempted murder, nor was she charged with anything. She was also never represented by a lawyer when the Barnetts legally changed her age to 30 years old. And at number one on our list, a new family in Indiana is trying to become Natalia's legal guardians. They filed for guardianship back in 2016, but in order to do that, they needed to get a hold of her birth records. This family tried to change her legal age back to the original birth date, but Michael Barnett showed up to that guardianship hearing with several of Natalia's past healthcare professionals as well as documents supporting the claim that Natalia was an adult. A judge denied the guardianship and ruled Natalia was an adult for the second time. Bonus fact for you guys, I know I've probably listed about 100 facts in this video, but both Michael and Christine Barnett are now divorced and have pleaded not guilty to two counts of neglect of a dependent. I hope this list has cleared up at least some of the confusion surrounding this case and we will update you guys if any new info in the trial comes to light. The prosecutor who charged the Barnetts with neglect of a child or dependent has asked the court for a gag order to prevent them from leaking any more information to the press. They argue that the widely publicized case has been extremely one-sided in the media and that is going to affect the trial as a whole. First of all, how the heck are they going to find an unbiased jury to oversee this case and deliver a fair verdict if everyone on earth has heard about a one-sided narrative? On Monday morning in the Tippecanoe Superior Court, Deputy Prosecutor Jackie Starbuck asked the court to stop Christine and Michael Barnett from releasing quote, any medical, mental health, or education records about Natalia Grace, the girl who the Barnetts claimed in highly publicized interviews was actually an adult who made them believe she was a child and put their life at risk. The state filing said, the the state is concerned that Michael or Christine Barnett or their agents will release documents provided in discovery or will divulge the contents of those documents, a large portion of which are medical records and educational records. The filing also states that putting information out into the media will prejudice a fair trial. There are over 70 articles in multiple languages regarding this case. The state also argues that the court should consider the victim and her rights, as the publicity given has been extensive and one-sided, in part because the prosecutors are not permitted to give interviews similar to what the defendants have done, being the Barnetts. So in a case like this, when there's so many people emotionally invested in it, because they've heard this terrible story about a psychopathic girl with dwarfism in the media, it's going to be difficult to find a jury, even if they move 
move the trial to another country. Some more info I thought I would relay to you guys that I found extremely interesting is from a very well put together Reddit thread with sources and links. Listen carefully because this is important. Back in June of 2010, experts at Peyton Manning Hospital confirmed Natalia is a minor and estimated her age to be 8 years old at the time. In June 2012, two years later, physicians at Peyton Manning Hospital did a total body examination of Natalia at request of the Barnetts and they confirmed her age to be 11 years old. One of the experts who examined her was an endocrinologist, which is a type of doctor that specializes in disorders and diseases that involve hormones, which is the exact type of disease Natalia was born with. Despite two separate examinations at this hospital, one month later in July of 2012, the Barnetts legally changed Natalia's age to 22 years old. They did this even though they had experts tell them that she was a child. So how could they have changed Natalia's age in a court of law without the advice of professionals? Well, the Barnetts did have experts. They used a medical letter written by Michael's primary doctor, Dr. McLaren, not Natalia's doctors as evidence of her age being older. To make matters even more interesting, Natalia had absolutely no say in the changing of her age. She didn't have a lawyer represent her. And that's because Christine and Michael Barnett were granted an ex parte, which is a legal action that does not allow the opposing party from being represented if it's decided that it's in their best interest. As you probably know by now, Natalia is in the care of another family who is trying their hardest to legally adopt her. She hasn't spoken to the Barnetts since 2014, but the Barnetts have refused to release her into their custody, legally. Because of this, the new family can't get any financial assistance from the government to care for Natalia as her foster parents, but they still regard her as one of their family members and they've cared for her since 2014. When the new family tried to have her age legally changed back to her original birth year, 2004, Michael Barnett showed up to the guardianship hearing and provided this letter from his primary care doctor. You might remember it from a previous video dated 2016. The letter states that Natalia's birth certificate was grossly inaccurate and that she had been seen by an orthopedist and an endocrinologist and neither was able to help substantially with age assessment. This we now know to be a false statement because there are hospital records on both the examinations of Natalia where experts stated she was first 8 years old then around 11 years old 2 years later. This letter was also written by Andrew Philip McLaren, someone who was not an expert on Natalia's condition and he reportedly wasn't her regular doctor. Why did Michael Barnett provide a letter from a doctor that was not an expert and had no experience or skills in assessing Natalia's age and condition when there were other doctors, experts who repeatedly said that Natalia was a child? Natalia's new family just celebrated her 16th birthday, which is the same age that was determined by the experts at Peyton Manning Hospital. From videos and pictures on Facebook, recent videos and pictures, Natalia has grown much older than the photos that are circulating of her that show her to be tiny, showing a drastic transition, a transition congruent with someone growing from childhood to a teenager. This is something that probably wouldn't happen if Natalia was an adult when she was adopted by the Barnetts. I don't know about you guys, but I kind of like stopped growing when I was 16. Natalia also seems to be very happy with her new family. Christine and Michael Barnett claim that Natalia has made a career out of posing as a child. So if that's true, then there's got to be other families that Natalia duped, right? A career implies multiple jobs. If you've been following this story for a while, you know that there was another couple Natalia lived with back in 2009 before the Barnetts. The couple has finally come forward, and I'm gonna serve you this update here for you on IO. Vincent and Nicole DePaul wanted to adopt Natalia Barnett back in 2009 before she was adopted by Michael and Christine Barnett. Vincent and Nicole DePaul, as you can see, both have a form of dwarfism, so they would likely be a very good judge of whether or not Natalia is an adult masquerading as a child or or if she really has been a child this whole time. The DePauls are from Albany, New York. Natalia stayed with them for multiple long weekends when they were trying to adopt her, and they say there is absolutely no way Natalia could be an adult. They provided adoption papers and a stack of paperwork that show her birth year was 2003. September 4th, 2003 was her birth date, making her 16 years old today. So I know you're thinking like, so why are these people coming out of the woodwork now? How do we know that they actually tried to adopt Natalia Barnett? The DePauls have photos with Natalia when she was young and they say that she was missing a tooth at the time. They could see her adult tooth coming in. They also said in an interview she looked like a child. She acted like a child. Do I look like a kid? I'm a dwarf. The DePauls say the Barnett's claim is ridiculous. First of all, one of the main reasons why the Barnetts wanted to abandon Natalia and legally change her age was because they claimed Natalia physically harmed them and their children and allegedly tried to kill them, right? Christine Barnett also claimed in several interviews that Natalia became violent toward her and her family members. She alleges that Natalia pushed her toward an electric fence and poured bleach in her coffee. Pretty shocking stuff, but uh, 
Hang on just a second. Natalia suffers from a rare congenital form of dwarfism called spondylopiphyseal dysplasia congenita, or SED. It's a growth disorder that not only causes dwarfism, but other medical conditions as well, to the point that someone born with SED might never achieve full independence. Natalia is limited in many ways. She has weak muscle tone, problems getting around on her own, premature arthritis, hearing issues, vision issues, spine complications. It's likely that Natalia will need a wheel or another type of mobility device later in her life. And if you look at old photos of Natalia when she lived with the Barnetts, she was so small back then. She was tiny. Is it even physically possible for someone as small as Natalia was, someone like Natalia who struggles to walk and use her hands to push a grown woman into a fence? It's probably hard for Natalia to do basic tasks, let alone push a woman into a fence. Vincent DePaul told the Daily Mail, I quote, if me or my wife tried to push someone into an electric fence, it wouldn't go that well. Regardless, in a new interview with Dr. Oz, Michael Barnett and his attorney dismissed the charges of neglect of a dependent and believe the charges should be dropped. Barnett said, I quote, from the position of, is she a disabled person requiring dependent care? Right now, today, October 23rd, 2019, Natalia has never been ruled by a court to be so physically or mentally disabled that she is considered a permanent dependent by somebody. And we feel very confident these charges are going to be dismissed based upon that. Michael Barnett and his attorney were accompanied on the Dr. Oz show by Natalia's old pastor, Stephen Thomas. When asked how old he thought Natalia was, he responded, I would say mid to later 20s if I were to guess. According to promotional content, Natalia is expected to make an appearance on Dr. Phil sometime in November. For the first time ever, Natalia Barnett has finally spoken out in an interview with Dr. Phil. The new family she's currently living with would not allow her to give interviews and would not give interviews themselves because they didn't want to jeopardize the case. I'm going to tell you what we know so far here for you on IO. What is gravy? You're watching Inform Overload. I'm Charlotte Dobre and today seems like a good day for an update on Natalia Barnett. Wouldn't you agree? Natalia Grace Barnett has finally come forward to tell her side of the story, a side that has otherwise been silent until now. You got the Barnetts, Christine and Michael, who are going on every show you could think of, likely being paid for it, and telling their side of the story, which is, Natalia Barnett was a 22 year old psychopath and sociopath who tried to kill their family on more than one occasion. A claim that Natalia says is not true at all. And her new family for interviews, she went with Daddy Dr. Phil and I ain't mad about it. One of the Barnett's main claims is that they had done bone density scans on Natalia that proved she was born in 1989. According to Natalia, her bone scans that she had done since she was adopted showed she was not lying about her age. That is consistent with facts I've told you guys in my last video about Natalia Barnett. She had bone density tests done at a children's hospital that proved she was a child. But then that exact same year, which was 2011, in order to get her age legally changed by the courts, the Barnetts provided a letter from Michael Barnett's doctor instead of the bone density scans done by experts for some reason. Soon after, the Barnetts moved to Canada and left Natalia in an apartment by herself in a city where she knew no one. Natalia was evicted in 2014 and she was taken in by her neighbors. She hasn't seen her adoptive family since they left the country, but because Natalia is legally an adult, her new family can't adopt her. As you probably know by now, the charges of neglect against Christine and Michael Barnett are still ongoing. The prosecution alleges that Christine and Michael abandoned Natalia, their dependent, who has trouble walking on her own and even performing daily tasks by herself. You guys gotta remember that Natalia could very well end up being a minor. Yes, her age was legally changed by the courts, but many of the claims made by the Barnetts against Natalia could be nothing more than claims. Claims that could jeopardize the case if they haven't already. If Natalia is a minor, then even many Mentioning her name in the press was something that the Barnetts shouldn't have done. Last week, a judge in Tippecanoe County, Indiana, granted a gag order in the case, saying that the Barnetts are not allowed to discuss Natalia's medical, mental, or education records in media interviews because doing so can cause pre-trial publicity that makes it difficult to find unbiased jurors. Christine and Michael Barnett have given interviews where they said that Natalia could be as old as 33. She was diagnosed as a psychopath and a sociopath. They claim she made a career out of duping families into thinking she's a child, and they also claim that she tried to hurt members of their family, including a baby. The couple is allowed to discuss the allegations and their defense in general terms as long as their comments do not impugn Natalia Barnett. As of November 4th, the gag order has also been extended to include Natalia as well. Natalia nor her legal counsel are allowed to speak negatively about the case or the credibility of the Barnett. So 
That's uh, gonna be kind of interesting with this interview. In case you haven't heard, Michael Barnett has already made another appearance on the Dr. Oz show, where he brought on a pastor that said that he thought Natalia was at least late 20s. The full interview with Natalia and Dr. Phil is set to air this Thursday, November 7th. It's gonna provide answers to some unanswered questions like why did the Barnetts want to get rid of Natalia so badly? How is it possible that a six or seven year old girl lived in an apartment alone for a year? Natalia Barnett was interviewed by Dr. Phil, and the interview aired yesterday. It was the first time Natalia Barnett has spoken out since the neglect charges against her adoptive parents, the Barnetts, made international headlines. So, does Dr. Phil think Natalia is a child or an adult? Find out right now on IO. Alright, so now that I've seen Natalia actually speak and defend herself, I gotta say, my opinion on her has kinda changed. We're not here to talk about my opinion, I'll let you guys know what I think at the end of the video. The burning question. Is Natalia an adult sociopath who's lying about her age, or is she a child? It actually might be neither. We now know that Natalia has been with over 30 families since she moved to the US at age 6. Natalia doesn't remember living with that many families, but she was very young at the time. According to Dr. Phil, sometimes when children are being moved around in group homes, they'll spend no more than 4 days in one place. Dr. Phil also says that there is violence in Natalia's past, so there could be some sort of PTSD stuff going on where Natalia's brain blocked out much of what happened to her earlier. On. One of the pieces of proof that Natalia was an adult Christine Barnett brought forward was that she caught Natalia hiding her menstrual cycles. During the interview with Dr. Phil, Natalia denied having her menstrual cycle even now, and the new family she's staying with, the Mans, say that Natalia has been with them for six years and they have not seen any evidence that Natalia has a menstrual cycle. Natalia has also not shown any signs of psychopathic or sociopathic behavior in the entire time that she's lived with them, which up until now has been six, almost seven years. The Mans also have children who Natalia looks after, and she treats them like her younger siblings. She changes them and feeds them their bottles. And the claim that Natalia tried to kill the Barnetts, pouring cleaning product in their coffee, pushing Christine into an electric fence. Natalia Barnett alleges that Christine and Michael twisted incidents to fit their narrative. So the cleaning product incident. Natalia says she was reaching for lemon pledge for tables because she wanted to clean the table. She got up on a chair, scooted Christine's coffee over, and Christine came over and asked, what are you doing? Claiming Natalia was trying to put the lemon pledge in her coffee. And the electric fence? Natalia was on a farm with the Barnetts. She had sat down because her legs hurt. Christine tried to make her get up, and both of them fell down together. The electric fence was in close proximity. Cynthia Mans believes Christine Barnett tried to discredit Natalia with mental instability, and when she couldn't do that, they re-aged her in the courts. The Mans believe that Natalia needs surgeries, and because the Barnetts had this other prodigy son that was supposed to go study physics in Canada, the Barnetts wouldn't have been able to move away because Natalia would hold them back. The Mans also believe Christine Barnett is hiding something. Christine Barnett alleges that Natalia kept knives on the top of the fridge, but I mean, Natalia is a dwarf. She couldn't reach the knife on the top of a fridge. She can't even reach the top of counters. Based on the comment section of that Dr. Phil interview, a lot of people don't seem convinced that Natalia is a child. And they're also even more convinced that she's either lying or hiding something. So what does Dr. Phil think? Is she an adult lying about her age? Or is she actually a child? Well, it actually might be neither. Dr. Phil said in an interview with Good Morning America that he doesn't believe Natalia is 30 years old. And quote, the court has done a real miscarriage of justice. He also doesn't think there's medical support for the idea that Natalia is a 30 year old woman. But Dr. Phil also doesn't think that Natalia knows her real age. He said, I quote, when you're a child, particularly coming from a group home in a foreign country, they didn't celebrate every one of her birthdays. I don't think she knows how old she is. Regardless of whether or not Natalia was a child, she was the Barnett's dependent. Dr. Phil criticized the Barnett's for leaving her on her own the way they did, arguing that when you adopt a child, that child is yours the same as if you birthed that child at the hospital. You can't just be like, okay, we're bored with you now, or like, okay, we got things to do, you just leave you here. Like, no, you that's your responsibility now? Like, you can't just leave her alone. <laughs> she can't even reach the top of counters. How is she supposed to cook for herself? The final verdict from Dr. Phil is that he said on Good Morning America that he believes Natalia was convincing and very articulate. So what do I think? I gotta admit, I don't know at this point. I did feel a bit weird watching Natalia talk about her past, like something was off. I don't think she's 30, but it also doesn't seem like she's 16 either. Regardless, I do believe the prosecution is right to charge the Barnetts with neglect even if Natalia wasn't a child. They left her on her own and made it as difficult as possible for another family to adopt her. There's another plot twist in the case against Michael and Christine Barnett, the adoptive parents of Natalia Barnett. 
Four more charges have been brought against them by the prosecution and I'm about to serve you this update here for you on IO. This is pretty big. So according to the prosecution, the Barnetts didn't keep up with Natalia's needs for surgeries. As you know, Natalia has dwarfism which causes medical complications. Medical complications like musculoskeletal deformities. These medical complications require surgery and if she doesn't get the surgery she needs, Natalia's condition gets worse and her pain gets worse. At least that's according to a probable cause affidavit filed last week. If this is true, then the Barnetts were totally fine with their adoptive daughter being in pain due to a lack of medical attention. They essentially let her suffer. And so there are new charges being brought toward Michael and Christine Barnett. Neglect of a dependent resulting in bodily injury. They are already facing two counts of a neglect of a dependent. The Barnetts adopted Natalia in 2010 and they knew that she needed these surgeries. She was examined by a doctor in 2008 after she got to the United States from Ukraine. If you've been following the story, you know that the Barnetts claimed that Natalia didn't speak a word of Ukrainian and didn't have an accent. According to these medical records, there was an interpreter there at the examination that translated back and forth. Which means they were lying! This examination is documented in medical records that charted the surgery she needed and set a timetable for these surgeries. The Barnetts did have copies of these records, so they knew when Natalia needed to get surgery according to this timetable in order to ease her pain and prevent her condition from getting worse. That is not the only proof though. Michael Barnett also sent a letter to Natalia's school in Westfield, and this letter addresses Natalia's surgeries and the surgeries needing to be done in a timely manner. The letter also states that he was aware that she was suffering because the surgeries were delayed. Laid. This definitely makes the case a lot more interesting because now we have actual proof of a motive. It is possible that the Barnetts wanted to abandon Natalia because she was too much of a burden. Which is why the Barnetts could have created this whole story. This crazy story they've told to the media and the world about Natalia being a murderous adult dwarf posing as a child who has made a career out of pretending to be a child. They also claim Natalia as someone who could barely walk on her own, someone who was clearly in severe pain and suffering from that pain because they didn't keep up with the surgeries they were required to by law, threatened to kill their three biological sons and attempted to kill Christine Barnett by pushing her into an electric fence. I don't buy it. I buy a lot of things, but this is not something that I buy, guys. The prosecution alleges that the Barnetts abandoned Natalia when she was only 8 years old. If this new info ends up being true, then that would mean that on top of already abandoning a child, the Barnetts abandoned a child, a child with dwarfism, who couldn't even reach the counter on her own. And they also abandoned a child that was in severe pain from her condition, and they just left her like that. I can't. This is f***ed up. <laughs> this is a f***ed up. Up shit right here. That is it for me. Leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want more, and I will see you next time.